Hello, everyone. <laughs> so my name is Mylène Josran, and I will introduce you to the York2 project and Open Embedded Core. Um, I'm an embedded Linux engineer at Free Electrons since 2016. I have an embedded Linux expertise and I'm developing, consulting, and training around the Yocto project. Um, I'm also a kernel contributor. Uh, I'm uh, with an audio driver, a touchscreen, RTC, and more to come. So in this talk, we will uh, understand why we should use a build system, how the Yocto project and Open Embedded Core are structured, how we can use it, how we can update it to fit our needs, because you may have your custom application or custom board. So we will see how we can integrate it in Yocto project. And I will try to give you some good practices to start using the Yocto project correctly, because um, you can customize many things, so it's easy to do things uh, the wrong way. So when you see a check mark, it, it means it's a good practice. So why use a build system? In the embedded world, we have many constraints. It can be uh, RAM size, uh, which is small, uh, boot time, and stuff like that. So it's nice to reduce the system to a minimal one and to add our own our custom application. A build system will automate the creation of the system in a reproducible way. And integration means packaging application to create a final image. Um, we have several possibilities with system integration. We can build everything manually, so you will have a full flexibility because you control each application you want in your final image that we will flash on your board. But handling dependency is very difficult and you have a lack of uh, reproducibility. Another option is to use binary distribution such as Debian or Ubuntu. It's easy to create and extend, but um, it's hard to, to customize and optimize. And it's also hard to rebuild from source. And you will use native compilation, which is uh, slower than cross compilation and it's not available for all architectures. Another option is to use build systems such as Build or the Vyocto project. Uh, it's not as easy as a binary distribution to use, but it's uh, nearly full flexibility, and you build each application from sources, so you can customize and optimize uh, very easily. <coughs> Um, you, you, can, you have a fully reproducible uh, build, so if you have uh, different users that will use uh, a, the same build system, you, can, you, you have a guarantee to have the exact same build at the end. And you will use cross-compilation, which is quicker than native compilation. So let's see the representation in the Yocto project. Um, when you want to compile an application, you will have several steps. First, you need to download the source, configure the build, satisfy the dependencies when you have some, when you need dependencies, um, compile the application using auto tools, CMake or Make, it depends on the application, and finally, install the binary on, on your machine. All these steps uh, in the Yocto project, we call it tasks. So you will have a task to download the source, a task to configure the build, and so on. This task, um, we will uh, describe it in a file that we call VCP. And this file, um, you need a tool to parse the content of the file and to know uh, what to do with this task and to compile a final image. And this tool is called BitBeck. There is some common task defined in Open Embedded Core. We will see later what is Open Embedded Core. Um, 
For example, when you're downloading uh, the source of an application, um, it's pretty much the same uh, for many applications. So you can create, a, a, so there is common task in Open Embedded Core. Um, in your final image, you will have uh, several applications. And as a VCP uh, compile an application, you will have several VCPs. And all these VCPs will be uh, organized in uh, what we call a layer. A layer, uh, in fact, you can see it as a folder. And you will have several VCPs. And all this stuff allows you to build a custom embedded Linux-based system. And this is the aim of the Yocto project. It will help you to uh, build a custom embedded system. Let's see what is Open Embedded Core and Pocky. Open Embedded Core, it's co-maintained by the Yocto project and Open Embedded, Open Embedded project. It's a set of base layer with recipes and classes. You can see it at the core of all the magic. And it supports some uh, architecture such as ARM, MIPS, PowerPC, x86, and also QME. Now, Pocky, it's the reference distribution of the Yocto project, and we will use it in the next slide. It contains everything you need to start a project. So you will have Open Embedded Core, which is the core of all the magic, Bitbeck, which is a tool that we parse every VCP and compile uh, application to create a final image that we will flash on our board. It also contains some additional layers um, that provide some extra recipes. And there is also, it contains also some useful tools uh, to ease recipes and layers creation. We see some example in the next slide. So this is how it's organized. So you have Open Embedded Project, the Yocto Project, and as I say, Open Embedded Core is commented by these two uh, organizations. And Pocky will provide you Open Embedded Core and Bitbeck. So now we will see two workflows. Um, we will see the user developer action. So it's how we use uh, the Yocto project. And we will see another workflow, which is our the integration workflow. So how to integrate a new uh, custom board or a custom application. Um, we will not see in this presentation how to create a distro because I don't have enough time. So first of all, uh, all the different actions that we can do with uh, Pocky. First, we need to download it. And we need to know which version you want to use. So there is this website that pro uh, indicates all the different releases of Yocto project. Um, there is an important information. It's the support level. You, we have a development, stable, and community level. Then there is uh, the code name that corresponds to a Pocky and Bitbeck, Bitbeck version. Um, so you have the Yocto project version that corresponds to a code name, which is um, uh, easier to remember. And the Yocto pro pro project guarantees you that using this code name, you will have a Pocky and a Bitbeck version that will work together. Sorry? Yeah. Ah, um, I don't know. Yeah, um. yeah. So how to download it? You will use git clone and you will check out uh, the the branch that correspond to the code name. In every layer, you will have the same, uh, the branch that will correspond to the code name. So you will have the same uh, branch for every layers. And thanks to that, you will have uh, all you need and all will work together. 
So layers, as I told you, it's a set of recipes, and they will have a mat they will matching a common purpose. Um, to simplify things, you can see it at, uh, as folders. And there is many uh, layers that exist. There is, for example, a layer for networking, and when you download this uh, layer, you will have uh, additional uh, application about networking stuff. So there is many, many layers that already exist, and this website uh, will uh, uh, let you know uh, all the different layer layers that you can find. So when you download a layer, um, use the same branch uh, that you use uh, for Pocky. So you will use Pyro. Um, this is the first good practice. Um, use existing layers before creating a new one. It will save your time. Um, so when you want uh, an application in your, uh, for your board, um, you can look at this website if there is already a layer that provides it for you. And the important good practice is to not edit uh, Pocky or upstream layers. It complicates, it, it complicates updates. So when you download uh, upstream layers or Pocky, you just take it like this and you don't modify, uh, modify uh, stuff like that in, in, the, in, the, in it. No, it's just uh, recipes that will uh, compile at the end uh, application. So now we, are, we downloaded Pocky, and now we have to configure it. Um, so when you download Pocky, then you will have a script with all variables needed by Bitbeck. You source this script. Then you will move in a build folder. And now you can run any commands, and particularly the bitbake command. Um, you will have a conf folder with uh, all the configuration. So there is uh, two files that will be uh, created by default. But as it's by default, you need to configure it to match your needs. So we will ed you will need to edit bblayers.conf. And in fact, you will uh, indicate uh, all the additional layers that you uh, downloaded upstream. So here it's an example with the three uh, Pocky layers. And then you have a Freescale layer that add uh, some Freescale board support. And Qt5, for to, which adds um, Qt5 libraries. Then you will edit local.conf with machine and distro. So a machine in describe your hardware. Uh, you can find it under specific layers that we call BSP layers. So in fact, uh, some SOC vendors will provide um, layers that we call BSP because they are um, adding support for board, for different boards. And you will find machine uh, in conf slash machine folder in many layers. There is already some existing machines. In Pocky, you have Begelbone x86. And for example, in Texas Instrument layer, you will find Begelboard, Ponderboard. You have the Freescale ARM layers that provide some EMX and many others. For the distro, it represents the top level configuration that will apply uh, to every build. So it will include some tools needed to use your hardware, such as compiler and libc. There is also some specific variables. So we will not see it in this presentation. And you will find uh, each distro in conf slash distro folder in all the different layers. There is some distros that already exist, such as uh, Pocky provide a Pocky distro. Uh, there is also Pocky Tiny, which is smaller. And for example, the Angstrom layer provides uh, the Angstrom distro. It's important to know that uh, local.conf, as the file name indicates, it's local. So it's local to, to your workstation. So if you have different users, you cannot share your local.conf. So 
a good practice is to avoid to change directly in local.conf because you can do many things in local.conf but try to not do it. Uh, otherwise, you break your, the, repossibility, the repossibility of the build system. There is a way to handle that in uh, the Yocto project, but I will not uh, talk about it here. Um, but you can edit local.conf uh, for text purpose or accept some variables such as machine and distro. So now we have configure uh, for our board and what you, we, we want. And now we will build an image. What is an image? It represents your root file system. So it's all your application libraries and configuration file. Um, that you need in the final image uh, for your board. You will find it under image folders. And there is already some image that exist in Pocky, uh, core image minimal, core image base, and many others. And to build an image, we will use uh, Bitbeck. Uh, so you use Bitbeck, then the image name, and that's it. At the end, you will have an image uh, which is configured for your board and that you can flash on it. Um, to be sure that you, you see the difference between machine, distro, and image, a little reminder. So a machine, it represents your hardware. So in the machine, you will choose which kernel, which device tree, and which uh, bootloader you want. In the, dist the distro, it represents the top level configuration that will apply on every build. So you will indicate which compiler, which uh, library we see you want, and some other stuff. The image, it represents your whole file system itself. So all the application uh, libraries and configura configuration file uh, you want. So you will choose which application you want such as mount, top, and which libraries. Um, the, in the machine, you will um, indicate which kernel you want to compile. And with the distro, you, s you say which compiler you want. So, um, yeah, I don't know if I answer you. Yeah. So now we see the integration workflow. So how to integrate, uh, for example, our custom application, our custom board. The start, starting point is to create a layer. So you may have a, a custom hardware, uh, need to update uh, recipes from upstream layers, uh, integrate your own application. And as I said before, you don't edit Pocky or upstream layers. And to do that, we will create our own layer. And in this la layer, we will host all the different modifications uh, that we need uh, to do on uh, recipes from upstream layers and all the applications that we, we want to integrate. Pocky provides a tool to create uh, layers. It's called Yocto Layer. And a good practice is to uh, use meta prefix uh, in layer's name. It's done automatically using Yocto layer tool, but you can create a layer uh, manually. And if you do that uh, thing to add meta uh, dash something. Uh, thanks to that, uh, user can easily see that it's a layer and not a common folder. Avoid uppercase and funny long names. And if you have different projects with common parts, um, try to create two layers. Uh, so you will have a common layer, and then you can reuse different parts uh, in different layers. So we created our layer, and now we will see uh, how to create a recipe to uh, compile our custom application, for example. So as I said before, a recipe is a file that will describe task for an application to retrieve its sources, configure it, compile it, and install it. It also handles all the dependencies for you. We will see an example in the next slide. 
Uh, as I said before, there is many common tasks that are defined in Open Embedded Core. And it's organized in folder with the same purpose. So you can find VCP's core, VCP's BSP, and some others. And then you will have the, a subfolder with the application name. To create a VCP, you, you have to create a .bb file. It's the format that BitBeck understands. The format of the of, uh, VCP file is application name underscore uh, version dot bb. Um, you must keep this format because uh, Bitbeck, when he will parse the different files in your layer, it will uh, check uh, the underscore and in the left it will find the application name and in the uh, right the version. The content of a VCP uh, can be divided in three parts. You will have the header, which is what, who, so the description of the application. The sources, so where we can download the application sources, uh, and what is it? Is it tarball, remote repositories? And finally, the task. It's how to proceed with application sources. There is some classes available uh, for tasks commonly used, such as kernel, CMake, and auto tools. We will see an example. So here, it's a recipe that I took from an upstream layer. And there is the three parts, the header part, the source part, and the task part. Um, in the header, we can find some uh, variables that describe the application. We can find the license, and we can see the dependence variable. Uh, this is how uh, dependency are handled in the Yocto project. So here, this uh, Edmond application um, depends and curses. So Bitbeck, uh, when he will pass, pass this uh, recipe, it will uh, make sure that end curses is compiled before uh, configuring it and compiling uh, Edmond application. Um, in the source part, uh, you find source array uh, variable. Uh, it's where you can find the sources of this application. And then you have some checksum to be sure that the source of the application is not corrupted. And finally, the task part with some flags com compiler. And you find two tasks, a do compile and a do install. Here it's another example of the hello world. We find the header source and part and task part. And you can see that the task part, part of, is very small. It just inherits auto tool. So in fact, in Open Embedded Core, you will find a class called uh, auto tools. And this class uh, will have the different uh, tasks, such as do configure, do compile for auto tools application. So as it's a hello world, you don't have any configuration to do. So inherit auto tools is enough to compile this uh, application. Now some good practice uh, about creating a recipe. Always use remote repository to host your application sources. It makes development quicker and you keep its history. So don't put application sources in your layer directly. Use a remote repository because application development is different than application integration. You will do your application development in one side, and when you have a release of your application, you will integrate it in the Yocto project. Keep the same folder organization with recipes core, recipes BSP, and so on. Uh, if you don't know which one use, uh, have a look at upstream layers and do the same in your own layer. And thanks to that, uh, we find recipes quicker. Uh, try to keep the, the header source uh, task organization in the recipe. So all the recipe will have the same content organization. With Bitbake, we can create include files. Um, so when it's possible, try to use and create include file. So you will have common parts in an include file, and then you will uh, use this include file in uh, your different recipes uh, for different ver version of an application, for example. And an important uh, 
things is to know how to compile uh, the application manually before integrating it in the recipe. It will save your time um, because you will know which uh, compiler flags you need and which command you need to compile this application. Uh, and then you just uh, work it in, uh, in a recipe. And many applications uh, have some um, uh, issue with cross compilation. So uh, compiling manually an application, will, uh, you will notice if there is a pro uh, an issue uh, to compile it with a cross compiler. As I said before, it's a good practice not to modify recipes available in Pocky and upstream layers. Uh, but sometimes it's useful to modify an existing recipe, such as some cross compilation issue. Um, so Bitbeck uh, allows to modify a recipe by extending it. Uh, the recipe extension and in .bb append and appended file must have the same root name as the recipe's extent. So if you have example 0.1.bb append, it applies on example 0.1 uh, recipe. So it's version specific. It means that if you uh, have a newer version of your example uh, recipe, for example 0.2 version, you need, uh, you must uh, update BB append, your BB append file. If you are adding new files that don't exist uh, in the recipe uh, that you took from upstream layer, you must prepare file extra pass variable with the path of the files. We will see an example. So as I said before, nmon is an, uh, uh, an application that you can find in uh, upstream layers. And here we want to uh, apply two patches in this application. So we create in our own layer this .bb append. And in the file extra pass variable is prepared with the path of the file directory. So where we, Bitbeck will find the two patches. So in your folder organization, you will have um, nmon folder, and in files folder, you find the two patches, which is uh, the um, folder that we indicate in file extra pass variable. You, it's also possible to append a task. So here it's a short example of a do install append. And so you can do what you want to do in this do, app, do install append uh, task, and you will do um, additional uh, action that it's done in the do, uh, install of the recipe of the, that you took from the upstream layer. So now we will see how to create an image. So an image is a top level recipe and it's used alongside the machine definition. As I said before, the machine, it's the description of your hardware, but the image is architecture agnostic. By default, uh, several uh, images are provided in Pocky, and you will find it in image folder. And as you can see, it ends with .bb. So in fact, an image is no more than a recipe. It just has some specific configuration variable that we will see in the next slide. To create an image, you simply create a .bb file in an image folder. Here it's an example. So there is some spe specific configuration variable to describe an image. There is image install. It's a list of the package uh, to install in the final image that we will flash on our board. You have image file system types. It's the list of formats that Open Embedded Build System will use to create images. We will see an example. <laughs> A uh, good practice is to create a minimal image to include it in other. Um, it allows you to have a minimal root file system, and then you will create different uh, images according to your needs. So you can have uh, image minimal, uh, image dev, image uh, x11, uh, and so on. So you will have, for example, in the image uh, dev, 
you will include all you have done in image minimal and you will add some development applications such as GDB. Thanks to that, you install only what you really need for your board. So for, for example, a board without a display doesn't need X11 uh, support. So here it's an example of a core image FE. So as I said, uh, an image, it's a recipe. So here we inherit core image, uh, which is a class that is providing by OpenMBD core. And it's how Bitbeck will know that it's an image and not a recipe. Then we add some descriptions, a license, and we found the two variables that I, I, uh, that I described uh, previously. So in the image install, there is a package group core boot. In fact, this, uh, it's a package of applications that you need to at least boot a board. And then here we add the two previous applications, so N1 and Hello World. And so when you build your image, so you do a bitback core image FE, at the end you will have two images. You will have an image in tar.bz2 format and an image in x4 format. And these two images will have the exact same uh, content package group, group core boot, and mon and hello world. So now you see how to create a machine. You need to create a machine if you have a custom board, but um, for prototyping, maybe you will use a development board that already exists. So you don't need to create a machine because you will use uh, upstream layers that will add support for this machine. So as I said before, a machine, it describes your hardware. Uh, it's stored in conf slash machine uh, folder. And the name uh, of the file is very important because, because it corresponds to the value that you will set in machine variables. Um, we have seen before, we edit local.conf uh, file and we set the machine. So for example, we can set the machine to Begelbun only because uh, Texas Instrument layer will uh, have a Begelbun.conf uh, file. So a machine contains configuration variable related to the architecture, to machine features, and how to customize the kernel image and file system use. We'll see an example. So there is target arc uh, variable. It's uh, the ar architecture of the device being built. Um, there is a prefer provider for the kernel. So it's which kernel you want to compile. You have the serial console, which is the speed and the device uh, for the serial console. And the kernel image type, which is which kernel do you want to build, um, for example, a Z-image. And a good practice is to describe your machine in a readme file. So it, it's an example. Um, as I said before, uh, OpenMBD Core supports some architecture. And there is ARM architecture. So here, we require some include files that OpenMBD Core provide for us. And there is a Tune uh, Cortex-A5, which is an include file with some configuration variable uh, to have to compile uh, Cortex-A5. Then we set the target R to ARM. And then we set the which uh, kernel and which uh, bootloader we want. So here, it's for it's Linux 8091 and the same new boot. Uh, we want a Z image and finally we uh, set which device tree we want. So here it's for a SAMA 5 D3 explain board. And finally the serial cons console. So that's it. We have seen the um, developer action, so how to use uh, the Yocto project. And we have seen also the integration work, so uh, the, how we integrate a new board and new application uh, in the Yocto project. Thank you for listening. And 
if you have questions, don't hesitate to ask them uh, now or later. Uh, uh, Based on your experience, uh, how much time does it take for you, for example, to create a new image from scratch? Is it uh, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20, 30? To when you need to re-image re something, how much time does it take for you? To build an image? Yes. Um, it depends, but it, the first time it's pretty long. Uh, it depends on which machine you build it, but uh, it can take uh, two hours. But um, with Yocto project, uh, the first build is uh, very long. But then uh, if you modify only a recipe, uh, it will build only this recipe. You will not build uh, all the different recipes. So next, uh, in the next use, it's uh, shorter. Thank you. Um, I have a question about uh, support level. Uh, you said that there was a development stable and community. And what does it mean to be in community support level? Um, the community support level is um, sometimes you will have some uh, bug fixes. And so they will be uh, integrated in these uh, releases. That's me. But you won't have uh, security patches or? Uh, yes, you will have some kind of patches. OK. Yeah. Do you know where do the code names of the Pocky branches uh, come from? Uh, no, I don't know. No, sorry. <laughs> Someone? I don't know if someone knows that. Yeah, you know? Yes, over there. You raised your hand? Uh, uh, okay. okay. Yeah. Uh. I think it's from a total annihilation uh, vid video game. It's possible. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, who, I mean, what company are the main maintainers from? Um, Pokey, especially of Pokey and the upstream recipes. Yes. It's maintained by the Yocto project, but uh, Intel is a great contributor to this project. Okay. So, thank you. <laughs>